much has changed since I last talked to you. Not I really. know it's been like what three hours. <laughs> um, let's see. I have changed pajamas. I was with the pajamas I was wearing the first time we recorded today were pajamas I slept in, which were like short, like shorts and short top. But I am currently wearing my Skims holiday pajamas that um, I got in this last holiday whatever drop they did um because it's a little chillier out today and it's a little chilly yeah and I, you know i don't like heat or whatever so but so it's comfortable i've been wearing it all day just as like comfortable to like lay around you know what i mean like be around and i don't have to turn heat on and i don't have to play with any of that it looks super comfy very comfy i'm very comfy and cozy curled up on the couch and i had some um, pumpkin pie straight out of the tin nice um and then I had a turkey sandwich and there will be a little bit more pumpkin pie left for me after we're done here. But then I'm going to go back to the couch. Well, I mean, I'm also doing document review for work, <laughs> which I can do like this, <laughs> thankfully. Exactly. I, it's all on the computer. Um, so, so I can do it just like this. <laughs> One of the benefits of working from home is <laughs> I mean, um, when you're doing doc review, I can just sit on my laptop. <laughs> yup. Also, I fell asleep last night watching this documentary called uh, about the cult of Mother God. The, the, it's on HBO. Um, I think I'd heard her name in passing, like her, but I'd never watched anything about her, so I don't know any of her story. Um, I fell asleep watching it last night, but holy shit, these people are batshit. They're just like high on on like hallucinogens all the time, and and okay. That's and and I don't know. Like I don't. I have to go back and watch it and figure out like and see what else. Like whatever. Like I'm only the beginning part because I guess I fell asleep. But um, I saw the trailer for it and I was like, this looks really good. I, it's. I think it's good. Like it's not as heavy as some of the other documentaries we're looking at. Because like, okay, so we mentioned this in the last episode was the um the Twin Flames documentary. So there's mm-hmm. two documentaries about the Twin Flames universe, which. One's on Amazon and one's on um, Netflix. Um, And they're both related to the same, the same thing, which, and there's a podcast about it. I think it was on Wondery. It was really good. Um, Where, and and it's just like, you know, same kinds of, same kind of story, but it's just like the, the, the documentary of this cult people who are like allegedly going to say, get you to like help find your quote-unquote twin flame and like these people were getting arrested and restraining orders and like all kinds of batshit crazy stuff and then there was like they started pairing up like individual like um all these people who were um of the same gender which is fine except for that a lot of these people weren't gay or they weren't trans and they were making them trans and like it was just uh, there's a lot of weird batshit craziness on that so super crazy yeah so we're gonna do those and there's this other one called i think dr beck and i kept calling it white savior but it's actually savior it's like the savior complex i think savior complex which i started watching that last night and i had to turn it off because i was not in a headspace to yeah, watch it's it heavy and it's a lot like it is well not one that you can just have on in the background like while you're doing something else like you need to pay attention to it that one's on hulu Oh my God, you guys, this one's so good. I highly recommend people watch it. Um, And then I also followed up reading Jill Duggar's book. And so a lot of the same um, missionary stuff. It's about like young Protestant women, young white Protestant women who go to the, go to third world countries and try to like convert people. Right. But then all of these other disastrous things happen and other things. And it's just it brings up a lot of really interesting and cool things to talk about. Um, so we started talking to Dr. Becca, our religious expert and also reality TV expert. <laughs> she like has a mash of them. I think she's doing a class on the mix of them, which I think is really fascinating. Um, we're going to do episodes that are going to cover a lot of these, right? Like we're going to do these episodes talking about these documentaries and like the Jill Duggar stuff and the IBLP. Oh, oh, and you have your IBLP friend. I do. So we're getting that scheduled. Oh my God, that's right. So we're going to do like a whole bunch of these other ones and we've already been planning them. And I know we've got outlines and things like going into the work. So there's going to be like some really cool content coming at you in the next couple of weeks, hopefully. Um, 
and um yeah so all of that's good lots of stuff to watch depending on where you're at in your thanksgiving family drama trauma drama trauma trauma um, trauma um where whatever your situation is um and perhaps you need some viewing perhaps you you need some light viewing and so let's watch documentary about um a bunch of um hippies that believe this woman is god i mean that's mm-hmm. cool um squid games though i want to get back to that but i gotta watch that with i have if i don't watch that with hetero life mate and um then i'm probably that might be like a divorce <laughs> like i don't not not divorce worthy necessarily because it's just a netflix show but that might be like let's call the marriage counselor worthy did they release all the episodes at once no and i don't know how many are out we only watched the first three of them netflix shows usually when they drop like that they drop like six episodes at once and then um they'll drop another set like the following wednesday oh okay so they break it up it's kind of so like you have a little bit of time to binge them and you stop everything but i don't know what they did with this one because i didn't look ahead i haven't looked at it yet gotcha um but and i think there's football on today so what day is it it's friday but they oh, have friday black, they have black friday football this year which they didn't used to have that's new huh. but it's only one game um but it's a good one jets at dolphins which matters very much in our my asc east division mm. which you see the game last night um Oh, Cowboys. Cowboys trounce the the <laughs> the commanders. Yes, I Lauren did. is actually in Texas. She went to the game with her husband. I saw that Lauren, yeah. our three girl and friend. She's there. She had good seats too. Mm-hmm. She's amazing seats. She and her husband went. That's awesome. I I you know I'm not a I'm not a Cowboys fan obviously, and I'm not really a Commanders fan, but I am obviously a football fan. Going to these kinds of games and stuff like I I can I completely appreciate um that that trip so yeah definitely um absolutely 100 percent um anyway so lots of good stuff to watch lots of good stuff depending on where your head space is if you want something a little bit lighter i would say maybe the netflix squid games because no one's actually getting killed and it's not real life like cults <laughs> you know the mother god god one has been good so far but it's to me it's more comical almost because mm-hmm. i'm like wait what and this guy's talking about how they were just high all the time and i sent you a clip of it you know and he's like, right you know been doing mushrooms for 72 hours and they gave me t- way more than i ever should have taken but i did and it's like that all the time so far what i can tell so i'm not as like angered by like some of the maybe like the david crushes of the world you know he doesn't fall into yeah. that category for me but like <laughs> oh do you know um when i was sick i watched um the i again rewatched the way down you know oh, yeah, with uh, yeah, gwen, yeah. Shamlin. gwen Shamlin, and yeah. then yeah. i watched the lifetime movie or whatever that was made i didn't see the lifetime i saw it the, was i just didn't watch it oh yeah so jennifer gray plays her and it was amazing i actually watched the lifetime movie and then went back and watched the documentary because i was like okay. wait a second let me watch this documentary again. And I, she was on point with her voice, really? her mannerisms. I mean, no offense to anybody that loves dirty dancing, but I didn't think Jennifer Gray was that great of an actress in it. Like she was okay, whatever. Okay. She proved herself movie, to be an actress. Movies, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't like she got, she got uh, the, you know, accolades because of her acting chops. Right. <laughs> it's like 40 fine. years ago. I'm like, yeah, it's a, it's, the movie's a cult movie for a lot of reasons, but her acting wasn't like, she wasn't winning Oscars for it. Right. She killed it. She definitely wow. did such a good job. So if anyone wants to watch a good like lifetime movie, if they want to, if they've already seen the documentaries, know the Gwen Shamlin's or if they don't even know the story, watch the lifetime movie. They summarize it pretty well yeah that's the one where the woman like had a cult of uh being skinny god will make you skinny like god pray, will make you yeah pray, pray you just gotta pray harder pray harder and you'll get skinnier and of course like as with any religious documentary there's always like abuse and all this other stuff happening <laughs> in the background which i this is all that stuff is what i'm so excited to talk to um dr becca about too and when we were talking about the duggars and the iblp and the this uh the white savior lady and like just all of it like there's just so much that's fascinating to me and i'm not even a religious person you know what i mean i just the intersection of all of these is how they twist the religion to me has been fascinating 
Yeah. Fascinating commingling of things, you know, the reality TV and world religions, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like my kids taking a world religions class. I have a podcast about reality TV shows. Wait a minute. <laughs> you know, right. Put these things together. Um, so anyway, so we're back, back on a bullshit, back on our bullshit. You know, uh, I my mind is just like mush after watching six hours. Well, by the time I'm taking notes, stopping, starting, mm -hmm. it's been like five hours of sister wives today. And I feel like I need to like go outside and take in some fresh air and just like right? decompress from the bullshit that is Cody not Brown. in the mood to make some ramen. Yeah, I already made the ramen earlier <laughs> on my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to drink some broth and eat something. But uh, yeah, this is just like, whoo. Okay, so this is Sister Wives season 18. We're going to do episodes 13 and 14, which will bring us current to what's coming up. Those we set, record this, we're going to put this out what, Friday. So you can catch up before Sunday. Yes. So episode 13, The Elephant in the Room. And because we're this is a new episode from the previous one we just did, I will say that previously we see Cody and Janelle in the new apartment. Robin and Cody have a birthday celebration for Truly. And Cody stringing Mary along some more by saying mean things, but not actually ending the relationship. That summarizes <laughs> the... <laughs> things, but not ending. Yep. <laughs> that just summarizes everything. <laughs> All right. So beginning of this episode, McKelty is having a gender reveal party with her family on video chat. And we see Robin and Cody on the video chat with all the kids that they haven't talked to in God knows how long. Uh, so that was pretty awkward. Robin... Um, looked absolutely terrified i don't know if you noticed that like her facial yeah, expression she looked like she's always got to make it all about what it's going to be about her and guess what robin it wasn't about you it was about yes. the kids Oops. right and cody in his interview was like it's fun to see everybody like, that's all know. he said it just, this is me saying my children are fun no oh so no the fun 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 <laughs> You start short circuiting. Exactly. Yeah, he, he says he hasn't had a positive experience with his kids, with some of his kids. So he's just gonna go in you know, because it's about. I haven't McKelty. had a positive experience with some of the kids on the screen. Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> positive experience. It's like he's talking as though it's like some sort of business transaction, or I don't know, like positive experience, like. Can These we are stop for a minute when you said business transaction? It reminded yeah. me what he does for a living. Sales. Yeah, but do you know what he sells? What? Oh, wait. So something about guns? Wait, yeah. What were you saying? Yeah. Uh huh. It's like gun parts. Gun parts, not even guns. It's like it's like the the like bumps, like the bump outs on like bump stocks. Yeah, bump stocks and shit like that. I don't huh. know enough about guns to to, but yeah, he sells like bump stocks and shit like that at gun shows and all that kind of stuff. Huh, interesting. Uh, I know you're Miss Second Amendment over there, but well, you know, I told you I saw that he was following like libertarian accounts oh, and yeah, that made right, me right, so right. mad. Because you I don't was, like, have triggered. anything in common with him. <laughs> I know. I was like, he makes the rest of us look bad. He's not a libertarian. Uh, he just he is. is like you think he actually is. He was posting stuff in the past. He deleted most of his stuff now. And I feel like it's minimal. Just, but not back in the day, he was posting a lot of libertarian like stuff. And he did mention freedom. Like he kept remember when they were fighting for the rights? He's like, I believe in freedom, freedom from the right. government, freedom from so he's like anti-government. Right. To a degree, but, but I thought he was just one of those wackadoo right wing nut jobs, right? You know what I mean? Uh, I don't I know. I didn't know See, there people, was like a libertarian slice of this. Well, people want to lump right wing nut, nut jobs a lot of times together with Republicans because both parties a lot of times are anti government establishment. So oh, you mean automatically people think that, you know, I don't know. They're one of the same. They're like, I, I, I feel like you guys are like akin with anarchists. And I don't mean anarchists Correct. necessarily like. Oh, anarchy. oh my God. like January six, like January yeah, six. Is no, in the in the in the def definitional sense of the word, you know, that's like anti-government and anti all that stuff. Like y'all, I mean, do you whatever? That's kind of how I, you know what I mean. Well, then there was like a whole documentary about. Oh, I saw that. Yes, in that was crazy. In Acapulco or whatever, like the anarchists in, in Acapulco. Yeah. Those are like the hard, hardcore yeah. libertarians that are just like out there. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's always fun. But uh, yeah, Cody was posting stuff about that. I was like, you know what it was? I think I think it was during one of the elections. We're talking years ago. Maybe it was during it was before Trump, I think. Well, I don't know. Anyways, he was posting all kinds of stuff, but I haven't he's he has not been active, right? right. On social media, I don't, I don't think know. so. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow. Um so, okay, where are we? Oh, so yes, but we digress. <laughs> so they're on Zoom, or I'm sorry, whatever uh family video chat you want to call it. Um <laughs> Robin said, hopefully they see the smiles and encouragement. So people won't think, you know, I'm the bad guy or whatever. Like smiles. No, you look terrified. <laughs> you're just scaring me. I just looked at you. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you weren't looking. <laughs> Your fake smile just scared the shit out of me. <laughs> Go watch uh, some American Horror Story. <laughs> yeah. Is it out yet? Um, I still have one of the Halloween episodes to finish up. They had the, ah. the they had an anthology that was like four s- smaller like halloween ones like not a full movie but not a s- series you know what i mean mm-hmm. and, and I, there's one that i still haven't seen one, oh, one. nice well then we see aurora being interviewed and she's crying and she's speaking up for her mom saying all the efforts she's made she's been the biggest cheerleader for healthy relationships between her dad and the kids and her dad and the other wives so from her perspective it seems so like her mom brainwashed. is trying brainwashed so she is like all up in their kool-aid right yeah. like they are all drinking the same purple kool-aid right there because mm-hmm. she is so eh, my mom just wants everybody to love each other which is probably what robin's doing at home she's probably sitting around going coney they don't you know come on cody but in reality yeah. she's just manipulating everyone yeah. Yeah. she doesn't mean it she doesn't mean actually i just feel bad that the kids are actually witnessing all this you know that's just sad and this is their reality this is what they think is is like they live on earth two with cody and robin while the rest of us live on earth one right (laughs) on video chat janelle said she's not bothered by seeing cody and robin robin together as a couple and i do believe that i don't think Janelle. i think she gives zero fucks like nobody else cares robin is like oh everyone's gonna care nobody cares robin nobody mm-hmm. cares it's they've already known this for years now so it's like yeah, nothing they've been new seeing this for years this isn't new <laughs> you know well Co- uh, mckelty and tony do their little you know what do you call it Gl- bomb thingy where they shoot off the glitter oh. confetti confetti can bombs? i just take this opportunity to say that i think gender reveals are the most stupid fucking thing in the entire <laughs> universe okay you, you know what's interesting i've never been invited to one consider i haven't either and like they weren't like i don't i i don't know i don't need to go yeah. like, doing something where like oh look we're gonna tell the family like i feel like that is a, that's more acceptable i think mm-hmm. to me like but like let's gather everybody together and shoot off cannons like this was all on zoom so whatever but like i just think it's a waste of money but i'm poor so what do i know maybe I mean, Maybe yeah, I, mean God. <laughs> I don't know, like, I don't know. what kind of parties people want to spend their money on, whatever. But like, I think gender reveals are the stupidest fucking thing ever. And there I said, I said what I said. <laughs> I said what I said. That's how I feel about gender reveals. <laughs> Hi. Well, we find out that everyone's guessing. They A lot of people think it's going to be a boy and a girl. And we find out that it's two blue confetti guns going off. <laughs> Katrina had her caffeine today from <laughs> earlier till now. She's yes, bouncing around her ADD. Like My me. cherry Coke Zero right here. Yeah. Um, so Cody goes, I'm just excited as if they were a pair of girls. I was like, okay, that's a weird statement. I feel like, it was is that Cody or is it the producers going, are you happy that they're boys? And he's like, oh, I would have been happy if they're girls too. Like, you know. Yeah, like- probably because of the way that they ask those questions it's like clearly that was an answer to a question that we didn't see asked yeah (laughs) Yeah. they're they're pairing it with something else yeah definitely and then mckelty's being interviewed and she says she wants the family to reconcile and said that everyone needs each other and they all need their moms and i'm like i think she's living in delulu land with uh mary because Mm -hmm. at some point 
no you don't you need to set energetic boundaries and just personal boundaries when it comes to people you don't get along with and i don't think that some of those kids need certain members of the family period yeah um i think that that's a super important important point to bring up especially around this you know holiday time just because someone's your family doesn't mean that you need to have their toxicity in your life like you can set emotional boundaries you can set physical boundaries oh it's family i have to go no you don't like you can go or you can set your energetic but like there are all kinds of boundaries and just because you're your family doesn't mean you have to let something toxic stay in inside your world right like right. you have to see them, maybe they're a once a year family member maybe you can come up with a plan for that or whatever but like yeah i completely 100 percent agree that just because your family doesn't mean that- right exactly so sorry, McC- McCulty. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yep. Uh, Jody says Cody doesn't have much contact with many of these people in the boxes, the mm. Zoom boxes. Uh, so Christine says she's not interested in getting the family back together, but she will be cordial with them, which, again, we set boundaries. Obviously, Christine has kids and grandkids and they share, you know, grandparents. And so she's able to be cordial but she doesn't want anything more to do with them you don't have to like you see them all in this gender reveal you don't have to be like oh robin and cody i hate you yeah like who's gonna do that nobody (laughs) nobody or no and and conversely no one's gonna be like oh robin and cody i see you i acknowledge you we're friendly like no it's not gonna happen that way yeah you need to get over that it's gonna happen like that Mm mm-hmm uh cody says someday the civil war will end in the family but robin and i will be like this and he's like putting his hands together and that's just the relationship we are going to be in so he's saying that if the family if the kids don't want a relationship with robin or don't want to include her in their lives then he won't be there with him like he it's it's all or nothing yeah and i think it's bullshit which i think is bullshit on a couple levels yeah because like these are your kids and and again he's setting these weird arbitrary standards for his adult children that that i feel are not fair and mm-hmm. inappropriate and not in line with you know i think is good parenting and i mean if you're gonna cut off one of your children because they don't like your spouse like okay i mean you have to make that choice you're gonna choose however you're gonna handle it whatever but um you know these these boundaries that he sets like he he can't have his relation he doesn't put his kids first right, right? it's him and Whereas janelle and christine have always put their kids always. first. Comes by they yeah left. that's yeah that's the bottom line yeah and uh he yeah so he's just showing his true colors more and more as he mm-hmm. talks mm-hmm. janelle goes i don't know where mary was and cody goes I thought Mary and McKelty were good. And then Christine says, Mary won't be on any other things with McKelty and her kids. I was like, damn. What happened with McKelty, who's this like bridge with Robin and doesn't get along with Mary? Well, weren't there rumors that McKelty said Mary was like verbally abusive and stuff to them when they were younger? I think she was the one that spilled a lot oh, of the beans. I could no. be wrong. Oh, we should do okay. some research on that. But I feel like McKelty was the one who came forward and just said that Mary was just an awful person. And maybe I'm wrong, but that's mm-hmm. what I remember. That's how, I mean, I'll, I'll buy, I buy it. Sounds right. <laughs> no fact checking on, on this. Yeah, yet, no, but, okay. could be wrong. Don't hashtag at me. That's just what no, I remember. No, no. And I remember I haven't eaten much in five days. So calm down. Oh, people. oh the other point I was going to make about Cody too, was that I don't think that I think that it was bullshit because Cody saying, oh, if you're, if you're going to like me, but not my spouse, like whatever. I don't think any of the kids have said, I'll hang out with you, but I don't hang out with Robin. Like none of the kids have said that. So. I think he, he the they way they don't like Robin, but they don't, yeah. They have never indicated that they're not willing to hang out with her because of that. Like if they don't want to be around her, it's because of the toxicity of the other bigger resentments and the bigger relationship issues, not because like, like, oh, I'm going to go hang out with my dad, but I, God, I don't like you. And we're only going to have lunch together, the three of us. Or, like, that, none of that makes sense. So that's what the other yeah. reason I think it's bullshit that he says that. Because I don't think it's true, first of all. Yeah. <laughs> and then second of all, even if it was, like, 
but prioritize your children and figure and not only that it just shows the passion that cody has for robin because he would never say that about janelle or christine or definitely not mary yeah. but i mean he would never be like oh to robin's kids if they didn't like janelle well you better me and janelle are like this and if you don't like janelle right. or whatever like, yeah. he would never have said that i mean he that was passion behind his voice yeah that and we have not he seen is- he defends his those kids he defends robin he defends their marriage everything with regards to them and how important it is to be there like robin doesn't ask him to come over in the mornings to help get the kids off to school he just likes to do it mm-hmm. and so that's how so the other kids are like well fuck you you don't want to hang out with us okay you know like the enthusiasm with which he does all of these other things goes and you know marries friends of his at a wedding during covid but- but won't go see his get, visit his daughter in the hospital for surgery. Make it make sense. Your priorities, dude. Exactly. Then we go back to Mary at the B and B remodeling the outhouse. Ugh. Um, <laughs> the outhouse. <laughs> I gotta mean that. I gotta make a yes. meme of that. Uh, she talks about her anniversary again for the twentieth time, and Cody telling her. The relationship won't heal and how he has no de- wait telling her their relationship i i can't even read my own hand or typo whatever he has no desire to have a relationship with her there yeah. we go i mean what, however it's yeah. worded that's what he says yeah. yeah so we already know this because he's said it more than once um <laughs> <laughs> uh isabel is having dinner with her family christine and her siblings and she christine's excited because she's like isabel gets to finally see like a happy healthy family Mm -hmm. no arguing just everyone getting along because you know she doesn't visit very often yeah because she said like uh, you know she moved to north carolina right so like when she left it was all kind of chaotic christine was still trying to figure out leaving and all that and now she's settled and gets Mm -hmm. to see what the life life is like after the transition and of course the kids start grilling christine about dating and christine says she's never dated anyone before cody and he was the first boy she kissed after they were married yeah wow good for her i mean or whatever nope Nope. Mm -mm. i know i always want to test drive the car before i buy it but never Mm -hmm. uh tony is and then tony jumps on the which he he kind of weirds me out when he talks sometimes about he this stuff. He always weirds me out. He's telling Christina to lie on a dating app and put a different name on there. So, yeah. and then when she gets to know the person, then tell them who, who she, really she really is really because is of her public whatever, life, yeah. which I think is a terrible decision because yeah. if you're not honest up front, then... Yeah, you're just catfishing. You're catfishing. <laughs> okay, it's Mary. funny though, the kids are like trying to give her dating app advice. Yeah. <laughs> she's like i'm not interested in casual hookups and i like never in my life would think this like woman coming from this religion would be talking even saying the words casual hookups like yeah like it has that thought has to have occurred in order for her to say nope not gonna do that (laughs) yeah can you just imagine on on tinder let's swipe right (laughs) swipe 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 um why is he on a fish ew did he just his junk what, what? <laughs> like, oh my god the trauma right they, they'd be so oh, they, you know they've gotten them just from being oh 100 percent. yeah yep she says it's uh frightening to enter the dating world at 50 and because of her past you know she has to explain everything but that she wants to move on with her life yeah so, yeah well janelle then is going to do a road trip with christine to go to visit christine's brother's house to drive atvs which she's never like, done before but i was like cody has atvs he's never offered to take you out on one or yeah like know. like you're doing the, hmm, curious but i also i mean christine's brothers are you know married and you know all happy and shit but like <laughs> janelle and one of christine's brothers would not be a bad combination you know oh okay i'm just saying Hmm. keeping it away in the family they all do they're all related to each other anyway right like <laughs> oh my god i love you <laughs> so, it's probably far uh, enough removed and they're not she's not gonna have any more kids like you know she doesn't have to worry about that that's true <laughs> that's true well they're all driving to visit the, her brothers when christine said if they were still part of the church they would have to go through counseling and get approval to get a divorce 
And then Christine said, aren't all of the adults not in the church? So why is Robin making a comment that they need approval of them divorcing? Like, she's like, Robin's not in the church. Like, nobody's in the church anymore. So yeah. why is she even making that comment? Yeah. Uh, God Janelle said, approve. Yeah. <laughs> you have to have sex with another man to make it okay. official. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? You don't have to tell me twice. Okay, but no go casual go, go find one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Janelle says that you can't just decide to stop the marriage based on their religious beliefs. But then, you know, Christine was worried that Janelle would have certain feelings about it because Christine didn't agree with that because she left the church. Anyways, Janelle's right. supporting her up through and through. So that's all that matters. Yeah. Yeah. And then Janelle says Cody Janelle hasn't, just been- hasn't gotten there yet with her own like crisis of faith that she had. And what, you know, eventually Christine came to the point where she was just like, okay, I don't, you know, any, as she said on the show, I, I, there's no ecclesiastical entity that I believe in that needs to approve this. So, mm-hmm therefore i'm not going to get an approval from somebody janelle's not there yet if yeah. she's even gonna get there you know right she's processing yep yep janelle said cody hasn't been in her house in 10 months so that they probably aren't married anymore and christine's like i don't want to sway her to leave cody even though it was the best decision that she had herself had made so she's being supportive but not trying to overly convince janelle to leave and Cody then starts talking. God help. Oh, just he talks. He says his life has changed a lot and he doesn't feel like a polygamist. Doesn't uh, he? He's like, I don't know. Been for years. <laughs> he goes, I don't know what's going on with Mary. I haven't seen Janelle in 10 months. And obviously Christine loves. So Robin and I have this special life together. And now I have more time with my friends. Okay. Uh, like, All right, Cody. Love- I literally typed his weird friend Brian is in town. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Brian. Oh my God. So no, this is the other weird friend, right? Not the one who with the eye. This is the other one. <laughs> and the and one the, who was that bachelor for so long per Cody. These assholes have this whole trailer. They have this whole fucking thing where they're going to tow this car to his got this friend's car lot in another state. And it's his stupid fucking Lexus convertible that he's been driving since day one of the goddamn show. And then they all do 2002 about, Ooh, look at the car. Look at the history in the car. So little vignette, these assholes are going to go move this car and they have this big old trailer and they did not measure the fucking car in the trailer to make typical sure men i know right like actually I oh should say that. us women are we're, we're the ones that are like oh well, let me eyeball it i think sometimes but like typical cody i should say but also i was like you know what cody could have made some money though like he could have auctioned it online like there's got to be a fan of sister wives somebody's got money that probably spend more money than what he's selling it to his friend for but whatever whatever okay yeah to each his own but they were trying like (laughs) cody's not exactly the best businessman you know he doesn't make the best business decisions aka let's move out of vegas and sell these houses that aren't going to sell and buy this land in yeah arizona (laughs) that's true and i found it interesting that he used these words when he went to describe his friend brian he said i the he's like i like to be in the presence of other men who love and respect you during hard times so he's even using the word respect with his friendships so it's like not even just as wise but like respect is just an ongoing theme and in his yet life. he like, complains about well i don't see why janelle and christine have to be hanging out when they're talking shit about me no they're friends and they're finding comfort and respect in each other going through mm-hmm. hard times okay is there shit talking about you there might be but you're not the you're not the focus because it's not about you cody no the focus is the kids i think yeah and they yeah. have their life long friendship has developed into what it is because they're not horrible human beings yeah and i've seen people comment on certain things like defending cody or just taking away from christine like she needs to get over i'm like these women like and it's always women i swear to god it always is and they're always like putting them down i'm like first of all this is a tv show people so of course they're going to show the drama and get and get everyone to talk about it but i'm like they have moved on they're doing great like all of them yeah. are doing great there's so much like haters online whatever yeah Okay, so this has to be one of my favorite scenes of this episode coming up because, and I can't even get, I'm gonna laugh. Okay, 
So I'll tell you why in a second. So Cody said Robin and him fell in love with each other in that car. And Robin said, okay, God spoke to her in that sports car and got her answer about Cody in that car. Quote, I felt God talking to me. There was a lot of fun stuff that happened in that sports car. And I'm like, they definitely had sex. They boned. That's how she got her answer. Her God. answer ca- came in the way her fucking an- first <laughs> orgasm. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was like laughing so hard. It's She's like, like God spoke like to me. I was in like, the front seat, like with her legs up on the window sh- windshield. <laughs> the car is forever like tainted. You know damn well none of the other women hooked up on that sports car with him. It was only Robin. You know, yeah, only Robin. Oh my God, burn the car. Burn it all down. Right. Uh, oh wait, that part and then this part. So they're talking about getting the car into the trailer and I hear them go, I got an inch. I got two inches. Cody, we are going to get it all in. I just need a quarter of an inch. And I was just like, 30 thoughts. I'm like, what? It's so wrong. You guys, between the two of you, you can't come with, you cannot come up with three inches together between the two of you. Okay. That's all I'm going to say. That's it. I needed a laugh. Okay. After the past week. So. Eventually, they realized they could not fit the car in the trailer. So that, there's that. <laughs> Cody goes on. To, <laughs> yeah. Cody goes on to say he, as a polygamist, he's always trying to fit square pegs into round holes. I force things to fit rather than going. Is this a fit? I've learned. I've had to learn that the square peg is not a good idea to pound into the round hole. I'm sorry. Yeah, your wives are probably like, thank fucking God you're just now learning this. How many kids and how many sexual encounters later? You didn't have to pound it. <laughs> you didn't have, he's like, I tried to use AI. So guys, I downloaded this trial for this AI generator. And it oh, gives after you like, our conversation last episode. <laughs> yeah, my ADD really kicked in. It took me a lot longer to watch this episode than it should have because I was like trying to make AI memes and... um Anyways, I typed in Cody and square peg round holes and like these weird, I'll send you what I came in. Oh not, my God. Like, not at all what I wanted, but um, <laughs> AI is like, so frightening. <laughs> it is actually terrifying. It is really um, terrifying. So I've decided moving forward, I'm just going to make my own memes like I was before and not <laughs> use AI. Just newfangled technology is just too much. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just too much. Um. I'm going to send you while we're talking, though. I am going to send oh, you this, the, the one weird meme that it created. Because I was like, what? What is this? This is crazy. Okay. So um, then, yeah, square pegs and around holes. Um, again, he can't even, like, admit, though, that it just didn't work. Like, he, he didn't really fully own it. I feel like he didn't own his bad decision making. <laughs> Are you reading the, the meme that AI created? astronauts looking at earth one has a gun like i don't understand into <laughs> into round holes like it's a polygamous puzzle oh, <laughs> i love it oh my god oh that's crazy <sighs> we're gonna have to do, start on a new fi- uh, 12 days of cody miss oh my god yeah that <laughs> maybe i'll have kaya sing she sings now so oh, she can be a part of it excellent yeah janelle says she loves having the dogs on the bed with her and that she can do what she wants now that cody's not there she's not interested in dating and she doesn't even like to look at guys and he, he, she's just not interested she says it's too much work and she doesn't want to do it fair enough that's fair she's not in the way. <laughs> honestly that's that's fair <laughs> i totally get it that's kind of where i'm at like nope just don't want to do it you got too much else going on you just, no, not a priority mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly So I I feel like I don't remember this information. Maybe you do. But Janelle said she was friends with Mary's family before Mary even met Cody. Do you remember that? I can't remember that. There's some relationship. There's a a, a a familial relationship somewhere in there. Like Janelle's mom married Cody's dad. I don't know. There, there was something. There was something. We need like a time. We need a whole timeline. They're in, they're out there. They are out. Oh, there. they are I've out there. Them. Okay. I've seen them on like YouTube and whatever. I you just have to like search for. Them. I'm not gonna okay. it, but I'll ask AI. 
yeah yeah and then like be careful on youtube because you can go down those rabbit holes and you get stuck into this you can get sucked into the weird shit that like is made by these weird people um and and you can go down some weird holes but you go down some weird holes. the pegs were pegs. <laughs> jesus christ they're um, gonna be like people reviewing this podcast they're laughing too much it's not that funny stop laughing we haven't had any new reviews in a while you guys if you're listening you like us please give us some reviews yeah we miss you good ones please <laughs> please um um holes i can't nessie now i, I know. sorry so yeah janelle was saying that she was friends with mary's family before mary yeah. even met cody yeah, like how all these tv polygamists are related so you go down yeah. these rabbit holes on youtube there are these people who are related or in these families and how they're all interrelated in various ways by blood and marriage it's like they all know each other the seeking mm-hmm. sister wives religious people with the the browns and the yeah they all they all know each other yeah well, Mary wanted Janelle to meet her new boyfriend and Janelle had the feeling when he walked into the room, like she knew him. She just had this, like a spiritual connection to him. And Cody would joke with Janelle about being in the family. And he said he flirted with Janelle or maybe talking to her a lot. Maybe it was flirting. I'm like, he was definitely flirting. He was like a, what? 19 year old, 20 year old. Ta- is talking to a considered flirting? Her. He's trying right. to like- distance himself so much from all of them in the beginning like oh i didn't love any of you anywhere anyway right like right. you don't have to do that like you don't have to delegitimize your relationship earlier relationships just because they changed like relationships right. change it doesn't mean the earlier part was is is delegitimized like he's so worried about what other people think but the ironic not what's funny about it is people would actually appreciate his honesty i think he would have a lot more quote support if he was just honest mm-hmm. yep we grew apart i just don't, i fell out of love with her i think people would respect that a lot more than him being like oh i never loved her yeah like or, oh i never like yeah either he's being honest and he's an asshole or he's lying and, and he's either an way yeah. you're you're an asshole but he's, he's an asshole anyway yeah yeah so as janelle was embracing the faith she said she thought she was supposed to be in the family and there was no doubt in her mind she was supposed to be married to him and it's interesting christine said the same thing christine said when us but also christine said she knew when it was time to leave it was time to leave Mm so which you hear this in these these circles a lot right again same like youtube rabbit holes right and you see these other polygamous families when they always they always have to address the fact oh it's the women's choice it's the women's choice right whatever um let's not talk about system you know systemic patriarchy blah 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 blah, blah bullshit but <laughs> um yeah you know yeah. like they 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 almost universally talk about it that the, the women are sort of conditioned you know this is what is expected in their world is that you're going to get god's going to tell you who you're supposed to marry Mm -hmm. and so that's what if you're raised that way then you're waiting for that and that's what you expect and you whatever it is that happened happened you know right and not only that you're taking people at their hormonal peak well some men are like whatever (laughs) you're taking 20 year olds full of hormones with absolutely no experience in dating and relationships right and nothing of but this course. religious dogma in their heads about fear and God. And then, right. you, you have to wait till you have sex. Pregnant. Wait till you have sex, right? Well, well, hell, I mean, I thought my ex boyfriend at 21 years old was the guy I was going to marry. I had a spiritual awakening and thought God spoke to me and said, This is the one. That's You're, called you know? your first orgasm with a dude. I mean, that's I mean, all that is. <laughs> <laughs> in our world, that's what that is. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, you know you're young you're on you're naive and even though you're an adult you're still naive like you're you're you know yeah yeah. so like frontal cortex is not fully developed yet no you know this there's a supreme court case on it (laughs) exactly it is this is why you can't sentence juveniles um and people under the age of whatever 25 or something like that you can't sentence them to a mandatory life sentence Mm. um like you it, it it can't just be like oh you committed murder you automatically get mar- or get life in prison it's um without the possibility of parole like you mm-hmm. there has to be some like you can still get they can still get issue that punishment but there has to be a deliberation there has to be some um 
looking into it. It's not just an automatic, this is this, you did this crime, therefore you get this. It you have to look at just because they're, they're and it has to do with the brains being not fully formed. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, Janelle said she would do it all over again. And she didn't think that um, relationships had an expiration date, but it appears hers did. Christine said the same thing. She's like, I don't have any regrets. Yeah. Um, But, you know, it's time to move on. So Janelle and Christine were talking about um, when Robin came along and how their family dinner stopped and their, they had traditions that just changed. And Janelle said, that Robin was like a separate entity from them. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, Cody, when asked about this, said, no, she enhanced the family and our traditions. He's so delusional in thinking that He's things delulu were. too. Yeah. And yeah, so basically, I mean, like they're saying, they're, they're saying like, yeah, she came in and because her kids were younger and different like or different phases it changed the way that we interacted we didn't have these friday dinners we didn't do these things on saturday because her kids were doing at a different age than our kids and or whatever you know and yeah cody who do she enhanced it sure she enhanced right it. yeah that his perspective is so crazy yeah christine said that she found that she thinks he just found a soulmate and that's who he wanted to be with and she didn't want to do stuff together so Christine's vibe was that Robin just didn't want to interact with the rest of the family. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. That's, that's. <laughs> yeah. Janelle said she thinks Cody is very happy to be Robin's husband. And this is a very good point that Janelle makes. She said a plural husband needs to grow beyond himself and that he tried hard for many years, but somewhere along the line, he found someone more like him, a.k.a. Robin. It was easy to be with her and but that he should have continued to grow beyond that to meet the needs of the other women. And it's fine with her that he wants to be there more, AKA Robin's house. And, she, um, but she doesn't want him to come back. So right, it just changes yeah. that. I like, she's like, okay, if this is what it is now, this is what it is. You go do your thing. I'm going to go do mine. Cause this isn't working for me. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 Um, and I think it's cool too that Christine said that Janelle made an obvious support to choice to support her throughout this, even though Janelle wasn't sure how she felt with Cody and was going through her own stuff. Um, she could have like walked away from Christine and just been like, Well, you're not my sister wife anymore, but she chose to be supportive mm-hmm. through her heartbreak. Their, their, like how deep their friendship actually runs. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's beyond just like, okay, like we're all friends friendly and we could plan together for the sake of being sister wives. Like they're more than that. That definitely. Cody said Robin and Cody. Christine said Cody and Robin are living monogamy and Mary isn't a part of their equation. I was like, dang. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. yeah. So we, we meet Christine's brother. Steve is her brother from her mom. And Levi is her brother from her other mom. So they, yeah. Brother from another mother? Brother from, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I like these guys. They seem down to uh, earth. They realists. Wouldn't you know? it be great to have Janelle with one of them? I mean, come on. Yeah. Is yeah. there another brother, Christine? Does Christine have another brother that's single? You know, she's got like, she's got to have. Got to have more. ton more. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and you know we talk about perspectives we've talked about childhood trauma and how everyone is affected differently you could live in the same household right Mm -hmm. and experience life completely different and i think this is a good point that christine brings up because she said she loved the she loved growing up in a polygamous family Mm -hmm. um she said that her dad married her other mom when she was five and that she had a great childhood uh that she was always doing stuff there are always parties but then her one brother said, uh, you could cut the tension with a knife that everyone was on edge or whatever. And yeah, then, there was always Christine, tension. And, right. And these were the yeah. younger brothers and Christine didn't even notice it. Yeah. And they were raised in the same household with the same parents, and, you know, all of that. Right. And they have completely different experiences with it, which, um, yeah, I mean, absolutely. hundred percent. Mm hmm. I didn't realize this. And again, maybe it's just because it's been so long since I've rewatched the entire series. But Janelle said that in the beginning, all four of them lived in a three bedroom mobile home together. Do you they remember made, that? I, I don't think we ever saw that on the show. That wasn't ever on the show, but they okay. made reference to it here and there over the years. 
Gotcha. Um, they brought it up, I think, when when Janelle was gonna get was getting her trailer. They, I think, oh, <laughs> mentioned it very, very briefly. I'm surprised they didn't mention it more, considering she was getting the trailer and that they were all and they're you know mary's like i wouldn't live in a trailer i wouldn't like well bitch the hell you wouldn't you did live in a trailer you all lived in a trailer together right they, maybe they, that's they, why she'll never live in it again <laughs> yeah but they feel like they, they they missed an opportunity there to to, to really get into it bring in that history because they always like the like we see in these episodes about the car and then the doomsday prepping stuff and like they like to bring in this history why not yeah they did then but Uh uh-huh and they said the walls were thin there were a lot of things that created conflict so we all know they're talking about having sex and can hear it because christine said yeah the walls were thin like oh just no just no yeah i don't know like i don't care if you say you're not a jealous person if you hear your significant other having sex with another person through the walls that has to be awkward on some level i'm a very jealous person unless you're swingers. yes yeah 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 so that's what you're intentionally seeking out but for the right. rest of us who don't right, yeah. <laughs> right. even like because polygamists yeah they said that they've never had right so it's just i don't know mm. janelle said it was a miserable time living in the trailer which i can imagine you, i mean yeah christine's just living there like as a just with two adults right much Oof. less four and y'all married one of them like, and no. three three women in that close quarters like i love my girl don't get me wrong oh, but like no. that's a lot of estrogen i don't know mm-hmm. how i would feel about that yeah, at no. all nope yeah well we hear christine's brothers talking about how they don't want anything to do with polygamy mm-hmm. um jc who was levi's wife did not know that j uh levi was thinking about polygamy early on in their relationship um he said something to her nine months into their relationship i wasn't sure if their marriage or relationship but right, it was hard to tell he was taken like aback by that like what well it, <laughs> no. it, to me it sounded like it wasn't that like he was like outwardly seeking out seeking out other wives and stuff but like it sounds like he came to a point where he was like when with her and being like i only want monogamy you know mm-hmm. Like instead of coming because he was raised polygamist, like right. I guess making a decision to be polygamist or making a decision to be monogamous might be a decision, right? So I feel like it might have been that for him. Like he, it wasn't so much that he was like, no, 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 I'm okay with not doing polygamy. It was, it was more that because he was raised in it, it was always sort of on the table, but he got to a point where he realized, no, I'm soundly rejecting that yeah is what it yeah. sounded like to me you know what i mean could be yeah definitely uh then janelle goes on to talk about which i think this is an interesting topic you're a lawyer how do you feel about this about oh. um janelle saying that if all women were able to legally marry the man that it would kind of hold the men more accountable and maybe they wouldn't just ghost because they in theory can just up and ghost a wife if they wanted if they don't have any legal ties to her um, and that these women would be able to get a part of whether it be child support or monetary support, whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, from from a legal property. standpoint, there's actually a lot of I mean, there's the 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 history of the the covenant and legalities of the marriage contract actually come from that point, right? It's these it's the 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 rights bestowed upon the couple is, is different as a married couple because you're taking on these things, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so there's actually a lot of history with that as to public policy and stuff behind the marriage contract. However, obviously there's going to be public policy at stopping it with one, you know, and, and, but, but uh, I mean, I think purely from a logistical standpoint, her argument is sound. I mean, right. that's, that's why there's, that's why there's marriage contract. There's marriage to begin with is, is to do these legal allocations of property and things like that. Like, you know the the, the the she's got a point <laughs> mm-hmm. and it's like how would they even divide up so okay let's say christine's leaving right and she how wants fast do you to think take these men would abolish or ab- ab- abandon polygamy oh if, yeah if it was made legal to do all this no you know what i think they would do i think they would still continue to have their spiritual like they would refuse to legally marry multiple women and then just convince them with their gaslighting and 
crazy yeah. talking like oh yeah. no 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 you, you don't want to do that you don't no, want to get legally the married. government scared government yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just know. be with me trust me just be yeah. with me yeah yeah 100 percent. i think that's it they want their cake and eat it too they, they nope. figure it out yeah exactly because it's not about love and love should be multiplied and not divided and all that other bullshit it's it's about power and it's about abuse and it's about mm -hmm. dominance and it's about keeping respect down and loyalty <laughs> for Cody, sorry. It, and it is about keeping down i mean it's keeping up the patriarchy it's a patriarchal society like white white supremacy is root there's there's roots in white supremacy with it so i mean <laughs> if you want to go there we can go there <clears throat> crazy <clears throat> excuse me yeah. i'm choking coughing <clears throat> yeah so oh yeah <clears throat> uh janelle and christine are talking about finances and fighting for what they deserve and christine makes a good point that she was able to trade basically her house for the land so she gave cody and the rest of the family her spot in coyote pass her her shares mm -hmm. and she walked away with the profits from the house and she was able to do that so she felt like she got something from the marriage right. whereas janelle everything is tied into the family so if she leaves theoretically it's really going to be hard to figure out what she gets and whatnot because how could she what i did know her interests yeah right is that robin's name is also on everything yeah so i think there's i forgot about this and i didn't know maybe i just didn't know that her name was on it but there was like something i read it was right around the time in real life where christine had left not where it was announced on the show yet but where she was in real life and Something came out, maybe it was sarcasm or something. I have to look, but it had to do with like the trust or the company or how they get their money and how um, the contracts with with Cody and Robin is an entity. Like they have an LLC entity, and like that's they have an the LLC. House, yeah, and like how the house is owned and incorporated. Like, yeah, it's all very sus, as it were. Mm -hmm, as the kids mm -hmm. say with relation to the other family members and we see this in the next episode mm -hmm. the next yeah. episode was a lot of that's when my fingers started hurting yeah, <laughs> yeah. before so we get to that one yeah <laughs> finish right. this one so Christine said one of the reasons she's uh, Janelle's still with Cody is because she has nothing in her name I guess I kind of said that yeah. and that's the end of this episode so yeah you know um yeah let's take a break and we'll come back and we'll talk about the property division issues in the next episode okay be right back and we're back so now we are on episode 14 always darkest before dawn we go back to the b&b &B. how exciting and mary is again for the hundredth time talking about her and cody's anniversary and the conversation that went down now, here we learn that Mary said that Cody said things to her that made her believe that he wanted to start a relationship with her again, such as, quote, cheers to a new beginning, which she said that this was a couple uh, anniversaries ago, I think. Oh, OK. It wasn't miss, this miss... anniversary, but she ah. talked about their anniversaries generally and that he had taken her on one. One, they went out for one of their anniversaries right after they moved to Flagstaff. And that was when he said he had said things to her that made her believe that they were going to be, he was interested in starting a new. Okay. Not I, this, I not this anniversary, that. but a previous one. That makes way more sense. Cause yeah. I'm like, she left that out. <laughs> okay. I've, I've seen this episode now, like 15 times, I think. So I don't know. <laughs> okay. Good. Cause I was like, that doesn't make sense. I group okay. watched it with, with Natasha and Melissa. And then I w watched it again for, cause when we were going to record earlier this week and then <laughs> I watched it again, I think today. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> so uh, Mary's talking again. She said, Cody told Mary, we are never going to be a married couple again. And she said, she's had a lot of time to figure out what she wants. She feels emotionally abandoned by him well before the catfishing. Mm -hmm. And that Janelle said that Mary is very loyal and she feels like she gave a commitment. And so she kind of wants to stay with that, I guess. But mm. yeah. 
Christine says it's disgusting that Cody has been dragging her on for years and equally disgusting, which we all talked about, Mm -hmm. that Robin is telling her to stay with the family and to let that girl go. Right. Facts. That that really, really bothers me. That reminds me kind of like the women in the church, like I've seen throughout all these documentaries, like when women want to get divorced because their man is cheating or whatever, and people in the church would be like, no, just stay, like work it out, like. You just, made a covenant to God. Well, bitch, what, I made a covenant right. to myself too. Guess right. what? Like, what did you, <laughs> or what did you do to make him do that? Or what, you know, abuse, same thing. Like, just stay, work it out. Like, the no. Cycle oh. of systemic patriarchal abuse, religious, patriarchal religious abuse that comes up in all of these other things. All right. of these like other the, Yes. Like, I agree to a point, maybe some things can be worked out. And I do agree. But then there are other yeah. situations where it's like, no, you have to put yourself first. Like you have to, f- you know, figure well, out what's some, best for some your things needs. aren't fixable to a point it, that it's satisfactory for everybody and all parties involved. You know? Exactly. And relationships are relationships ebb and flow. Like it's okay. Relationships end. It's yeah, it happens. Okay. Yep. And the fact that Robin is just support. I could never tell somebody that's suffering mentally, spiritually, emotionally. Don't just hang in there. Like, no, you're not a good friend. Yeah. How can you just be that person? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cody is in a cynical way. Thinks that Christine and Janelle are united against the common enemy, which is him and Robin. And that's kind of where their friendship is, is, you you know, right. Whatever. Their their friendship isn't blossoming. Isn't <laughs> isn't blossoming? I'm choking on my soda. Their friendship isn't blossoming and taking off. No, because Robin and Mary are both bitch asses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Cody says he's known Christine's brother since they were teenagers, but I guess they lost touch when you know the divorce happened or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she doesn't know that Christine has two uh, an uncle that's a twin, but either here or there. Well, Cody doesn't, Cody doesn't know his own kids' ages. Like, That's much, true. He's not going to know whether his wife's random polygamous family's uncle had twins or something. Come on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they're all expecting way too much of to- Cody's lizard brain. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, the Christine, Janelle, her, their brothers and whatever family are going on a hike. And Christine says she hasn't talked to her brothers about the breakup. So I guess they'll probably find time to talk about it on the hike or whatever. Uh, we learned that Janelle went back to school for her bachelor's to finish her bachelor's degree when Gabe was a baby and she would work full time and study at night when the kids were asleep. And Christine was helping her with that, which was great. And she was 33 years old when she graduated, which I thought was pretty awesome. Yeah, awesome. Some... I mean, I got my law degree with my five year old kid or four year old kid at the time. You know, you Oof. got yours, you know, your doctorate. Mm-hmm with uh kaya like we we get it we we, we get it <laughs> and like we said in the last episode or a couple of episodes you just do it you just figure it out figure it out <laughs> yeah yep uh christine said she helped now when she could and uh what was interesting too is when christine was talking about when she was younger the religious group that she was a part of was teaching the women and the whole group men and women that the world was going to end so all women yes. all they needed to do was get married and have babies and interestingly enough her dad was the one to be like no no you need to go to college which i give her dad credit for that because yeah yeah if that's he not the mentality a little, a little more progressive than his his peers apparently you know they used to, the joke was and i don't know if you hear it out here but when i grew up out on the west coast the joke about um BYU was you're going there to get your MRS degree. MRS. Mrs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was so, like, masters I mean, of masters of what? <laughs> What's me- what's you're the like, R for? Your masters of rec wait, what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, the, the Mrs. It's only like, yeah, the point is just to get married and have kids because that's what the long time i mean you know the historically that's the what the religion was and then you get these people who are like a spin-off of a spin-off of the fundamental or the regular mormons right so there's this this doomsday prep thing which they've talked about before yes they, uh, you yes. know that they have this this doomsday prepper thing and you know that goes to well why get why go to school why get an education all you do is get married and have kids so you can get into um heaven 
you know. Mm-hmm. And the LDS church apparently doomsday prepped just like the mm-hmm. religion that you know Cody oh, and yeah. all Look, them are in. Go into a prepper's rabbit hole. Go down one of those rabbit holes. Those are uh, I'm scared. Yeah, it's interesting. Although I gotta find a Mormon friend. The Mormon, during, the Mormon when I need COVID LDS friend. The Mormon and uh, yeah, the LDS and the fundamentalist doomsday stuff versus like I'm not talking like Jan Six rioters. Doomsday. Oh, I see. You're not saying. those gotcha. kind. Not gotcha. like the militia kind. I mean, like the Mormon kind. Gotcha. Not the militia the other kind. Yep. <laughs> there are two different. Be careful if you do go down the doomsday prepper rabbit hole. There are different <laughs> avenues. <within it. laughs> oh. How do I know so, this? Because I've gone down some of these rabbit holes. <laughs> I feel like you need like a Venn diagram, like on one side Mormons, on the other side, do, uh, you know, alt right. And oh, in the, the middle, the militia the shared is like toilet paper, guns, <laughs> <laughs> toilet paper and guns. I do like Janelle's comment about who had toilet paper during COVID. <laughs> right, yeah. exactly. Like I did too, because I have an obsession about making sure we always have toilet paper. So, <laughs> uh, well, Mary says she sees the wisdom in the food storage, but it wasn't something she embraced, so she left it up to Janelle and Christine. Yeah, well, then we learned, too, that Robin, uh, Christine and Janelle's kids actually really do miss Robin's kids. And so it would be nice for all of them to be in the same space again Mm -hmm. for the kids' sake. Because they are the innocent ones for the most part, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, Before we move on from the preppers conversation, though, um, Cody made a point in this somewhere that he was saying because... They were storing out all of, you know, Christine and Janelle were the preppers or whatever and Robin or whatever. And they stored all of their long-term food in Christine's garage. And so when they lost Christine's house, what did they do with it? Not move it into like Robin's McMansion or any of these other places they already own. They're paying for additional storage. Make it make to sense. store the food. Make it make sense. I can't. I can't. Okay. Moving, moving, on, moving on. Yeah. Moving on. Yeah. It's crazy to me though. crazy okay we're gonna take another quick break and we'll be right back hey fraudcasters i love the holidays but shopping is always a daunting task especially right now when life is so lifey and crazy busy and the kids schedules are all over the place so i was so excited when skims announced its biggest holiday gift shop ever this shop is going to make all my holiday shopping so easy this year and i might get a little something for myself while i'm at it You will find the perfect present for everyone on your list in the Skims Holiday Gift Shop. Sisters, moms, dads, boyfriends, husbands, best friends, wives, even your pets, y'all. Skims is creating the next generation of underwear, loungewear, and shapewear. The soft lounge sleep set two-piece pajamas and smoke sparkle print. Oh my God, these are amazing. And they come in these perfect little gift boxes ready to send. And I might pick up a set of my favorite, the Cotton Jersey Boy Short 5-pack with matching scoop bralette packs. Those are the most comfortable, and also those come in great little gift boxes ready to send too. Your favorite skim staples like Fits Everybody Cotton, Soft Lounge, and Sleep are now available in cheerful colors and festive prints. Plus, Skim signature holiday collections are back for the season and designed for the whole family. You've never been this cozy at home for the holidays. Collections are available in sizes double extra small to 4X for women, and unisex styles start at newborn sizing for children's styles. Skims makes holiday shopping so easy. With styles for everyone in the family, Skims Holiday Gift Shop is the destination for all of your gifting needs. Believe the hype. Skims has over 100,000 five-star reviews and for a reason. Skims Holiday Gift Shop is now open at skims.com. Plus, get free shipping on orders over $75. After you place your order, be sure to let them know that we sent you. Select podcast in the survey and be sure to select our show, The Fraudcast, in the drop-down menu that follows. Hey, Fraudcasters. With the busy fall season already in swing, you might be looking for wholesome, convenient meals for jam-packed days. School's back in session. You're running around all over the place. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, can help you fuel up fast with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. 
Relish the best of autumn with fall flavors. Their limited time only hearty comfort meals featuring seasonal veggies, meals like cranberry pecan chicken and apple Dijon pork chops, which by the way, I just had for dinner tonight. Fantastic. Ready in just two minutes, they'll satisfy your fall cravings during the busy season without the hassle. You can even level up with gourmet plus options prepared to perfection by chefs ready to eat in record time. Treat yourself to the upscale meals with premium ingredients like broccolini, leeks, truffle butter, and asparagus. Head to factormeals.com slash broadcast50 and use code broadcast50 to get 50% off. That's broadcast50 at factormeals.com slash broadcast50 to get 50% off. Hey, fraudcasters, if you're racking your brain trying to think of the right present for someone, you're never going to go wrong with gifting the most comfortable sheets, clothing, and accessories that your friends and family have ever felt. I'm talking about Cozy Earth. Cozy Earth is the brand that has been featured on Oprah's Favorite Things five years in a row. And it's important to note that each year she featured a different product, whether it was the waffle bath towel bundle, the bamboo jogger pant, or their best-selling bamboo sheet set. These are made from viscose from bamboo. They're temperature regulating and they only get softer with every wash. All Cozy Earth products can be returned or exchanged within 100 days and include an additional 10-year warranty against defects. Can you just think of all of the people on your list that would love to receive Cozy Earth on a gift, which is pretty much, I don't know, everybody? Who doesn't want the most comfortable set of sheets ever? Whether it's the best-selling sheets, their life-changing luxury pajamas, ultra-comfortable joggers, plush lounge socks, which honestly for me, you could never go wrong with those, or their premium bath towel collection, you will love shopping and gift-giving at Cozy Earth. And here's our gift to you this holiday season. Go to CozyEarth.com and enter code FRAUDCAST to save up to 40%. That's CozyEarth.com with code FRAUDCAST. CozyEarth.com. Okay, we're back. Now we get into the good nitty gritty of this episode. Uh, the meeting between Robin, Mary, and Cody on Coyote Pass. Uh-huh. All three of them sitting awkwardly at a picnic table next to an empty pond. <laughs> I cannot wait to hear your recap of this conversation. <laughs> I, I almost thought about writing a, a script. Are you going to do a dramatic reading of it? <laughs> I almost sent you my notes so you could read one part and I could read the other. We need like a third person. <laughs> and then I just gave up and I was like, let me try to summarize this. But I'm like, well, there's too many good parts to it. So Can we get her life made in here to play the part of Cody. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should play Mary with the deep voice. Just because oh, Cody, like, we, I don't know. Not that your husband you sounds like Robin. What? You have to do Robin, I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I love fine. your Robin imitation. No, my notes are terrible. You can, I'm like typos and everything, but you'll see. We'll, we'll do our best. Uh, so they sit down and Cody says, well, let's take a walk basically and look at the property. And the women are like, whoa, 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 whoa. We have to stuff to talk about here. Like mm-hmm. skipping some parts. Because um, they're like, let's walk the property to divide it up. Uh, no, no, no. Back up, back up. Beep. <laughs> yeah so they're talking about dividing up the lots and cody says that lot one will be the family lot he already made that executive decision because it has the pond so i i do understand why he thinks that that should be the family lot like all the kids and grandkids can go and share the beauty of the pond whatever those but ponds I, are just you know how you can i go dig one for you get a fucking backhoe scoop up some dirt and fill it with water when it rains those ponds are not like real 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 ponds they're, they're not, not like, real ponds they're not retention no. ponds or any of that shit they're just a big hole in the ground where rain fell like that's all <laughs> they are i'm not gonna go play in that shit uh, yeah oh. cody says he's not giving the family lot to any wife Mary said, okay, so Cody and so Robbins. And Robbins, in addition right. to Robbins' other four and Cody's other four, and then. <laughs> yeah, so Mary's like, okay, so Cody and Robin both get eight lots total, so they each get four lots each, and that's not fair, and Janelle gets four lots, and they're trying to tell Mary she only gets two lots, because now that Christine traded in her two for the house or whatever, uh, it leaves Mary with two. Instead of those two going to Mary, they're going to, Cody's keeping them right keeping christine's instead of mm-hmm. it being instead of 
like Christine's going back into the pot and then they shake it up and redivide it based on the remaining amount of people. Instead of doing that, they take those went back into the pot and they just added to Cody's. I feel like if they just all drew straws, <laughs> this rock, is why, paper, scissors it. I don't this know. This is why Janelle needs to get the fuck out or get her name titled off of that shit or whatever, just so she doesn't have to deal with any of it. And whatever she does with this, she needs to make sure her name is separate from everybody else. Get off. I. She needs to just sell them her interest in it. I agree. Yeah. And Mary's like, I deserve part of the property. How is that fair? Which yeah. I do agree. I do agree. Yeah. Like, it's not yeah. fair. Period. Not fair. fair. You're nope. all contributing. How does Cody Ro- and Robin between them get like eight plots, nine, ten plots or something like that? Janelle gets four and Mary gets two. Like, how, yeah. how does, in what universe? And, and, and <laughs> even Janelle doesn't think it's fair. Mm-hmm. She's like, and her logistical mind is saying, hey, we need to divide this evenly and we need to have a real appraisal to see what's fair in dividing up the land okay that's yeah. totally reasonable right like objective reasonable way to determine everybody's value right awesome. and yeah. of course cody like he always does which i think is bullshit goes on to say well mary only has one child and i have 18 children first of all you don't have 18 children because 95 percent of the children hate you so you really and only have gone, like four. and they're adults and they've moved because you right. kick them out so exactly. don't act like this is your family plot no Robin gets her eight, you get your or her four, you get your four, and then you also get Christine's two. Like that, no. Yeah. The family, says, the family. Who's the family other than you and Robin? Right. He's like, like the it's whole, you and Robin. <laughs> the whole family understands that Mary doesn't want to share resources from living with her, which I do see his point. That doesn't make it okay. But I'm saying, no, like, yeah, it's a different argument. He's, right, right. He's, it's it's a completely different aspect of the argument. Right. Right. And then Robin goes on to say, you never know if Cody and I are going to stay together. And then it was like, Cody, it's a bad joke because you could see the look of the look on Cody's face when Robin made that joke was the look that he gives the other women when he just opens his mouth. He finally looked sad. (laughs) I was like, "Okay, now you know how your other wives feel when you talk shit to them. Like, it's horrible. Did you see how sad he looked? Yeah. He looked like a little puppy dog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Right. She, was, she had to like pacify him oh god you i'm sorry it was just a bad joke uh, robin says she deserves her fourth too and and she shouldn't be counted with cody because she gets tired of being lumped together with cody and everything everyone thinks that every decision they make is is them to do together and that she is separate from him and she doesn't know what the future holds and she and... is now conflating multiple arguments because whether or not she should get an equal fourth is not the same as everybody thinking that because Cody says that Robin thinks it too. Like those mm-hmm. are two completely separate things. Whether she should get property titled just in her name is one thing. Right. And whether they're a unit and comes in terms of like family decision making, that's completely separate. Like they're not the same, Robin. Stop trying to, it's a false equivalence. Mm-hmm. Um, now these are this is when the stuff gets a little bit crazy in the conversation so bear with me <laughs> you're trying to keep so, up right i was typing a lot today I, I typed 23 pages of notes guys so bear with me between all these four episodes so robin tells cody not to answer the question of where he sees the future of the land and robin says wait until your headspace is clear and calm so because mary brought up like the future i think and you know, whatever. And then I guess Robin being Cody's soulmate and twin flame noticed that Cody, (laughs) Cody was getting in his head and she didn't want Cody to just say, well, I don't want to be with Mary or, you know, say "Hey, Mary needs whatever. So she wanted him to be clear and in his head. I don't know. Um, she wanted to be able to better manipulate him in a better headspace to what she cool. wanted, not for him to decide things on his own. She had to manipulate him to make it her decisions, make him think that her decisions are actually his own. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She, she I agree. Incep- like inception on him. I agree. Yep. Cody says, who is to say he just doesn't get upset one day and wants to up and move out of Flagstaff uh, like Christine, which is interesting because Robin just said who's who knows what the future will hold and then he got, got really emotional but then later on in the interview he says who's to say he couldn't just up and leave 
So like did. Well, that's what happens in marriages sometimes. Right. And the reality <laughs> is, and you do have to think ahead and you do have to be smart and know, hey, this may not work out. It's not being like pessimistic. It's just being realistic. Yeah. Like what, yeah. how do I protect myself? Right. Yeah. yeah. Prenuptial <laughs> agreements, you guys are good ideas. They yep. protect you. Mm-hmm. So Mary, more I- than you would have gotten probably otherwise. Yeah. Mary That's asked the thing Cody, about it is you can you can negotiate that and you can negotiate terms that you wouldn't get via state laws. Anyway, I think that no, I think it's smart. I think now it is. I think it's a good idea, mm-hmm. for sure. Well, Mary asked Cody, does that mean I get them because Robin and Janelle each have four, meaning the extra two pieces, lots or whatever? And Cody says, I'm not thinking that. I'm, and he said it in such a asshole way you did this whole conversation was so like oh is that really what's gonna happen no and he's trying to like answer it like i'm authoritative and in charge man oh i'm not i have not decided that that's the way it's going to be divided amongst us uh, family because you know whatever right falling out of his head and mary responds with i understand and she looks down like a beaten dog or something like it looked like she was just like i i understand but then in her interview, she goes on to say, it's always been this way. I only have one child. So now I'm not even really a wife. And I'm. I, she feels like she's less than, but she really is just as important as everyone else. Mm-hmm. So she understands that this is his view on her, is that she's less than pretty much. That's what she's summarizing. Like she gets where he's coming from. Mm-hmm. But I feel like, like she didn't. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> like she, she didn't look like she stood up for herself the way she needed to there. Right. Which is okay for me because if she's doing what I hope she's doing, then she's going to be fine. Mm-hmm. If she's consulting with a lawyer and or she's clearly consulting with a therapist because she's got some words that are coming out of her mouth that are like, oh, those are therapy words. Right. I've heard those <laughs> phrases from my therapist, right? You know, talking about yeah. what 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 Cody and Robin feel about it is irrelevant. You know, mm-hmm. and I was like, damn, that's like, that's some straight therapy right there, right? Like, that's what I <laughs> um, so I would hope that she, I think, yeah, I'd like to think that she's consulting with the, you know, land labor attorney people that would help her extract her uh, fair piece from mm-hmm. it. And if, and if that's the case, then her sitting and just here having this conversation with him it isn't necessarily to decide what's going to happen she's like okay i think this and he's like i think this and then she can go back to her attorney and be like this is where he's at and let him take it from there but yeah that's just in my imaginary world that's also (laughs) the same imaginary world where mary is sleeping with jen and her husband yes who knows at the at the at this the the swingers um b&b in utah the uh, outhouse. <laughs> outhouse. <laughs> outhouse slash sex house. What? <laughs> <laughs> with her, with her, whatever, mm. whatever she wants with the, with the wood grain and the, the, what, what's the thing that she uh, likes? Steampunk. Steampunk. Yeah. That's yeah. it. You know, but nothing round, nothing round. But have you seen the steampunk like costumes and stuff with the like, steampunk no, they... is like, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong here, but isn't steampunk like, 2015 let's look it up when's in that but when it came of age like we're in 2023 here but you know what those costumes could be like sex costumes with the masks on and stuff oh yeah i mean if it's where history and off. fantasy collide with technology it's a subgenre of science fiction yeah yeah like yada. when did it come of age like, it was- no it's like 2016 see i was right yeah, you're close. Definitely. Yep. Yeah. Oh, wow. I remember it being a thing in 2016. So, Mary, come on now. Get your mm-hmm. shit together and get the white counter. Get the white counter. Exactly. I think the white counter would be way better. Good in that little space. Don't go with dark colors. What do I know? I don't know how to decorate. Know. But so then Mary says, I now's a good time to drop a bomb. And I wait with bated breath, wondering what this bomb is going to be but we don't know yet we cut back to jo- uh, janelle and christine and her brothers playing frisbee filler. christine says there's some filler of janelle having fun right <laughs> christine says she's the most competitive and i was like i get it christine because we're both aries 
And I looked up when her birthday You're very was. Very much like Christine. I can see that. Yeah. Oh, 100 percent And I her she's a day, well, many years older than me, but well, not many, but <laughs> 12 years older than she's 12 years older than me. And she's April 18th and I'm April 19th. So there you go. Okay. But we always win. So I get that. Is, Christine. Your, is she your twin flame sister wife? Maybe. Maybe she's my twin. Yeah. She could be. Maybe you have to join a twin lives universe and find out how to get her as your as your sister wife. Right slide into what's his name her husband's dms right her dms no i'm just kidding <laughs> um christine tells, Good okay Battery, watch it <laughs> yeah so we hear the conversation now with christine talking to her brothers about what happened between her and cody and she says to them that cody told her he wasn't attracted to her and that she wasn't nice to her sister wives aka robin and janelle was like she really was not mean she never saw her being mean yeah and, and, and Janelle's like, yeah, code word for wasn't nice enough to Robin. But like, as you yeah. already pointed out, like there were different life stages, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> mm-hmm. So I guess, you know, Christine uh, refinanced the house that she was in and took Cody's name. Cody wanted his name off of the house, which I don't, I don't honestly, I don't understand it. Cause I thought if you refinance, isn't it beneficial to have two cr- different credit scores? If it like, was probably so he could put his name on more property with Robin. Okay. Okay. So my, guess, why. my guess was, was uh, yeah, his, his desire to get his name off Christine's had, had nothing to do with wanting to get off Christine's. For that sake, it was so that he could free up himself for more of his and okay. properties. That makes more sense. And that really hurt Christine because she was so excited that her and Cody finally owned something yeah. together. You know, they never had a legal marriage. So they finally had something in both of their names. Mm-hmm. And here he comes taking his name off of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she said that she made all of the payments on the house and he didn't do anything for it anyway. But still, that sucks. Yeah. Yeah, but then she that was what enabled her to trade that for her land equity. I feel like everything happens for a reason, mm-hmm. right? Like, it's interesting how that happened Uni- because it, universe like you said, set it all up. Yeah. Yep. Easy for her to get out. Oh, I doubt um, it was easy, but <laughs> easier. <helps> streamline. <laughs> or she was also, she could have been on the lookout for a lot of these things, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, wait, if she was already kind of thinking it, like, oh, this might be an opportunity. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. She even if she wasn't planning it back then, but if she the seeds of they were planted of these little things when they come up when the opportunities come up if you're open to them, you know, definitely. And we already talked about it earlier how we find out that Robin's name was also on pieces of land, yada yada. All their assets are combined, um, and then Cody does bring up the point. Well, yeah, they are all combined, so it kind of it affects him too that all yeah. of the other women's names are on. So okay, yeah. I get it. Okay, they're all Whatever. in the same boat. Get it? Okay. Right uh christine said that the day she left cody she felt like she got her power back and she said she knows janelle doesn't have to follow her path but she wants to let janelle know that it will be okay on the other side and i thought that was really nice and i think that is so important you know and for anything right like for if you know like you're going to be okay. If you got, you're going through a breakup, like you're going to be okay. You're going to get through. Cause you don't feel like it at the, when you're going through it, you know, you're mm-hmm. going through a breakup. You don't feel like you're going to be okay. Like time stands still and you feel like everything, you know, so to have somebody on the other side, just being like, you're going to be okay. Somebody that you trust, you know, that says it's going to be okay. You're going to be okay. Whatever path it is, you're going to be mm-hmm. okay. Yeah uh well then we go back to mary and robin so finally the bomb bombshell is that she's telling cody and robin that the b&b needs her there's there's an empty feeling there and she's drawn to being there but in reality we know she's renovating the outhouse her shit house into uh (laughs) the white pink sparkly circular the the, the boutique (laughs) steam (laughs) steampunk pink glittery whatever bullshit she's doing matches the clothes Um, that she's trying to sell (laughs) so she probably won't be renewing her lease in flagstaff and her intention is to still build on the family property though okay okay let's back up back Mm -hmm. up mary because the the bmb needs you such a fucking cop out bullshit and so i'm probably going to be downsizing no bitch you are going to be downsizing you're you're gonna let your lease go and you're gonna move and not because the airb or the bnb needs you is because you're gonna leave his sorry ass finally and go be with your lesbian lover and her husband and she can't just say that 
And, yeah. And, but, but she's at least gotten this far in her therapy. So, <laughs> you know, baby mm-hmm. steps, I guess. Yep. And Robin said, so it's, it's okay. It's like a temporary situation. And uh, then Robin starts crying, but no tears are actually coming out as we see multiple times throughout this episode that this she cries with no tears. Thought that it was somebody making fun of Robin, and it's actually Robin crying. I was getting a lot of bores with my sister wives. Mm, that one, yeah, that comes later. Yeah, oh, that's okay. So many crying, so no tears, so many <laughs> so lack much of crying. tears, so few tears, <laughs> so few tears. Thank you. My brain is like wah scrambled. And it's interesting too that Robin feels like her world is crumbling, crumbling down, and she can't fight it because it's not fair to Mary. I want to yell and scream. No, please don't do this. <laughs> why does she have more emotion than anyone else when it's not even her life like oh how does robin make mary leaving cody about robin exactly (laughs) it's It's robin's world we're just living in it and cody's world we're just i mean it's just their world oh my god i spit my soda on my computer (laughs) I was drinking that right as you said that. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, Mary says she's not apologizing for what she needs to do. And whatever people's emotions are, are relevant. Okay, good for you, Mary. Uh, so other here's... people think of you as none of your business. Exactly. Now, here's where we kind of get into the script. So I'm just going to kind of read what I have. And then you just jump in, I guess, because... <laughs> It gets a little scrambled, but I feel like a lot of these things are important to say because of the shit show of the conversation that goes down. Okay, so here we go. Cody, Mary, do you even want to look at the lot or is it off your radar? Um, And then Mary goes on to say some bullshit, whatever. Then Cody goes, why can't we make it about where we are instead of what I said? Because we now know that Cody and Mary's conversation, he wants it to remain hidden because he doesn't want to expose that he's a douche right. even though we already know it so now cody's getting nervous when he realizes that mary is about to expose what he said to her so mary said that him and her had a good conversation the other day and i feel like he's not in as good of a place um or if it's me or something else going on and does that make sense what i said i don't know well, I feel okay like so th- this whole thing to me sounded like they had had a previous conversation about the status of the relationship and they agreed to keep it. Okay. We're not together, but we'll pretend like we are. And that at some point that became Mary said to hell with that. I'm not going to do that anymore. This is my life. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I feel like this whole conversation was like, it comes down to just that, but it's hard to tell with all the word salad that each of them spit out so many words without actually saying anything. Yeah. (laughs) So Cody jumps in and was like, it's blame. And Mary was like, I'm not meaning to blame you. And Cody said, so just don't, he won't own up to anything. He will not accept that Mary or anybody else is going to blame him for what is about to go down or is going down. Right. Uh, so Cody told Mary, um, Cody said, Mary romance for you and I is not in this picture and that they decided that they weren't going to be in a, in this marriage. Mary, what did I say that made you feel like I was blaming you? Cody, just that you brought up things that I've said and done that feels like blame. And then Robin's trying to interrupt them as they try to have a conversation. I'm like, shut the fuck up, Robin. This isn't about you Uh so (laughs) (laughs) yeah i I think this is more of 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 like it's that they had this conversation they had this private agreement that they were going to pretend on tv you know or whatever and her bringing it up right now maybe perhaps at the advice of her therapist i don't know um production (laughs) same thing right (laughs) Um, (laughs) at this point after 18 seasons these guys are like yeah mary no um 
So they're telling her to like stand up for herself, and he's she's catching him off guard by bringing this out to, to into the public. So she's like, "I'm about to to tell all tell all our dirty laundry, right?" In front of Robin, too. In front of Robin, but here's the thing: I think Robin already was in on it, but mm. but but so yeah, so she's threatening to air their dirty laundry, and he's like not knowing he's not going along with it, so he's trying to like do his weird gym, mental gymnastics to like avoid everything the but the and yeah. yeah exactly and and i think that's what's happening and then robin kind of combination of like wait i know that they're pretending to do this but then i also like she's caught off guard with mary bringing this up with them too and so she doesn't know what to do so she, she she's like which role do i play do i play the oh i don't know anything with cody's done role or does she play the you know mary like does she play mary here like what does she do so i think that's where we're at when with with um when robin jumps in and Mm -hmm. so that's where well cody goes i'm gonna be as honest as i can without being a jackass i'm like yeah okay maybe it's fair robin's here and she's been your advocate for seven years she's always advised me to be with her in a way against my wishes and i'm like okay that so, see that to me is more is just confirmation about this theory right is that against his wishes like he doesn't like mary and he doesn't want to be with mary but it's probably robin's idea to pretend on camera that they there's still something or to pretend to mary that there's still something yeah um, and and he's following those orders from robin because that's how they keep mary's income stream Mm-hmm. But it's against his wishes in a way because he then he doesn't actually want to be in anything with Mary. And mm-hmm. he has to pretend to love her, even though he hasn't actually been doing a very good job of that. Yeah. See. So and Kat- he Katrina's ongoing analysis. <laughs> yeah. And he does say in his interview that he he's like, we have to be in a place where I can love her in a way she wants to be loved. Or she's going to move on anyway. And that's that's true. But you've mm-hmm. let her on for seven years. Like that's not or longer, I should say. Right. Well, I think I think what Mary's trying to say is, you know, you didn't lead me on like we had this agreement and I'm done with it. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? That's true. But but, but if him because also you've done a really shitty job. If you're this is you pretending to love me for the last seven years when you barely interact with me like that's not even pretending. Yeah. Yeah. And Robin jumps in as trying to advocate for Mary. And then because in Robin's interview, Cody. right. She's like in their religion, sister wives are supposed to advocate for each other. And she always has. We know you just said it, that she's advocating for her, her own needs and wants. And, but she's pretending like she's actually advocating for Mary. Right. Because she can, can she can make those two arguments, you know, she's in yeah. her head. She's Mary being there benefits her. So yeah yeah so cody goes you want something that we can't have together we can always have something else but not that i'm like he's literally beating around the bush he robin starts crying and walks away he's literally beating around the bush he's not going anywhere near her bush is the point that i think he's trying to say (laughs) right robin walks away she's crying fake tears again and then um he won't just say i'm not into you he's like we can't have that same thing together he won't say it i'm just like you're fucking asshole dude yeah like just say it yeah and then robin yeah, says they're both really calm and that is scaring her which i i know when you're calm you're done like when you yeah. have no emotion left that's why like christine and all the earlier episodes she's just mm-hmm. like okay that's she's done she's, she's done doesn't matter what he says and does it's irrelevant yep what her decision is yeah and then mary goes he's putting it all on her he's not owning up to the fact that he's just not interested and um mary said it doesn't mean she's not mad at him for not giving her what they had promised each other because she still is but all right so here's more of the script robin maybe if i'm there i can stop them from finalizing it mary i feel like we just had a breakup conversation Cody, I'm glad we've gone this long so we can be friends in the departure. Robin, are you even accepting that? To Mary. Mary, what else am I supposed to do with that, Robin? Well, Robin, you've been doing it for a long time. Mary, I'm not forcing somebody to be with me who doesn't want to be with me and act. Mm -hmm. Cody, the act is easy. Mary, the act is easy. Cody, 
just performing my act as a husband. It wasn't an act. It was a performance as a husband doing a duty. <laughs> he Mary, did a duty. <laughs> Mary, no one wants that. Robin, one of the reasons why she wanted to be with him because of how, oh, wait, how he was with it. Wait, what did Robin say? Yeah. One of the reasons why she, I wanted to be with him because of how he was with his other wives. I know he's in a dark place. Cody, I'm not deciding this is over. This is me, Mary, saying what you want doesn't work. I'm like, not saying well, it's over. See, right, right there. Right. What Obvious, you want what is saying. right. <laughs> yeah, so this whole, all these shenanigans are, again, so them being friends, he's like, oh, so we can part friends amicably because they made this decision years ago that they were no longer together you know, whenever they made this private agreement to pretend, you know, we'll just stick around, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Um, and now she's like, <laughs> well, guess what? You're not going to give me my land? Well, fuck you. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to air mm -hmm. all her dirty laundry, right? So she's telling you. But because they came to that decision, it's not an emotional for one for them at the moment, right? That's why they're so calm. It, right. They're not in the emotional moment. But Robin, I think, is caught off guard by this because... She didn't know Mary was going to come confront them with this, I think. So she, was, mm -hmm. I think Robin's are actually feeling true emotion there, even though she can't squeeze out a tear. But I feel like she is because she's she's doing the emotional equivalent of Cody's mental gymnastics and word gymnastics that he does. Or, like, yeah, yeah. That he's like, he's somehow trying to figure out a way of how to get out of this situation while still looking like his shit don't stink right like how does exactly. he come, how does he come away with from we're just going to pretend to be together but we weren't really together very well so it wasn't very good and it was shitty anyway no matter which way you slice it there's no way for this this asshole to come out of this looking good right yeah but he he is trying to do that so that's why all the mental gymnastics and then robin is the the um emotional equivalent of that mm-hmm and Cody goes on to say, I'm willing to fake being in love with Mary if I needed to for the sake of whatever. I don't know. I can fake the through money, this. I don't want to, but if you're going to insist, then I will. And then Mary's like, why is he willing to say he can act if he hasn't done that for 10 years? <laughs> I'm like, God. Hence my point. If that's what right. their agreement was, like, he's doing a really shitty job at it. And she's probably, you know, and she's like, well, if this is what it is anymore. I'm no. Yeah, I'm Mary getting my end of the deal. My end of the deal. Mm-mm. Yeah, and Mary says to Rob and just let it go. It's not fair for her or Cody to feel like he has to do a duty. duty. And duty. Rob, yeah, Robin said, it's not what she wants. And Mary said, it isn't what she wants either. And Cody said, it's not what he wants what either, but it is what it is. I'm like, shut up, Cody. It is what you want. You want her to go away. Mm -hmm. Like, but what? they want her to be around still so, so they can still get her income stream. Go do what you mm -hmm. want, but be legally part of us and she's like deciding mm, nope guess what when you tried to shortchange me on my, my land motherfucker this is what's gonna happen yeah well then obviously it, uh, the convo kind of ends because everybody knows that it is what it is it's over and cody gives they all give each other hugs super weird cody looks just pathetic as usual yeah <laughs> And Cody said it was probably a wasted seven years for Mary, but they agreed it's over. And then Cody makes That's an fine. asshole. It's a wasted seven years. Don't care. <laughs> yeah. And at the end, Cody's like, I hope she finds peace because I will. And I'm like, ew. Like, just what a dick. Yeah. And yeah. then Robin goes on to fake cry saying, I always wanted to live plural marriage and I will spend time on my knees looking for peace and answers. And I was like, well, we know you're going to spend time on your knees. But... <laughs> you're going to get okay. answers. That you're going to get more answers from God in the back of that uh, white sports car. <laughs> yeah. And then we see And then I'm like laughing. And then we see a flashback to Cody in his underwear swimming in the fake two inch pond. Uh, and I almost threw up again with this. I was like, he was like, oh, in his black underwear. I'm like, oh my God, God help and, us. And Robin's all, look at the mountains. And that was like what Mary did to Christine when Christine was like, peace out, motherfuckers, I'm out. Mm -hmm. This isn't a safe place for me. I want to move back to, you know, Utah. And Mary's like, but look at the mountain. Well, you had the yeah. spiritual experience. And now Robin's doing it again. 
Yeah, and then your favorite part um, when Robin's fake crying, saying, I wanted to sit on the porch with my sister wives, with our kids and grandkids, and just look at the mountain together. <laughs> sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I'm really trying here. Uh, next. <laughs> I just like, oh. Uh... <laughs> uh so next time we see the tell-all but it's not a group tell-all there it's like one-on-one with everyone Mm -hmm. and we see little snippets nothing super interesting except for we do see cody saying that he told mary he loved her when they got married but he really never did and david makes an appearance christine's now husband so that we look forward to seeing well and i think in in years past they've spread these out over like two to three episodes so i i wonder how long it's gonna wait is it me oh wait did i get myself you can't hear me. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Uh-huh. Oh, weird. Okay, sorry. <laughs> All right. I think that's a sign that we're done. <laughs> done. Okay. Peace out, guys. We'll talk to you soon. More content to come. Bye.